Number do we have over here? <laughs> <laughs> so basically we have a bunch of great people. Um, as he was giving me the, inter the nice introduction, I reminded myself there was once a speaker that they want to recall the next speaker, so, so they called him up. The, the, the next speaker, I don't have to make a huge introduction, he just made $10 million selling oil in the state of Texas. So, so that's his achievement. So he comes up to the podium and he says, um, before I start my, my little speech, I would like to um, make some adjustments to that introduction. And he says, it wasn't 10 million, it was a million. It wasn't in, in oil, it was in real estate. And it wasn't me, it was my brother. And he didn't make a million, he lost a million. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, much appreciated introduction, but uh, um, I'll just have a little schmooze, as you call it, on the topic that Ellie chose for today. First of all, I'd like to thank Ellie and his team for inviting me today. Ellie's been an inspiration to us as well. And as a client of P-Tech Group and like other clients, he, I can definitely call him a true friend. So I'm delighted to be here today. Today's topic, um, as we actually touched, so it's perfect timing, is how to become remarkable. And I would like to open it up first to understand how do you see the word remarkable? So if somebody could be a helping hand over here and tell me what do you, what do you think a remarkable means? Outstanding. Excellent. Okay. It's above the rest. Great. Extraordinary. Great. Any others? Memorable. 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 Okay, so all of those are really true and those are, those are words used when we talk about remarkable. I want to take it to the next level and speak about how to create that experience with a customer that he's gonna remarket your company to the people around him and all over the place. Because he had that experience that needs to be shared with other people to know that those, this, this company is so phenomenal that I need to speak about everybody. So this, instead of speaking, spending your marketing dollars, you have people remarketing your company and your story to others. So I didn't prepare a lot of stuff. I rather prepared some stories that we could take out of that story certain lessons that we could learn and then try to bring it out certain things that we could um, do specifically in our, our goal, which is um, customer service. So let's talk about the fundamentals of what becomes that moment of, exper um, of, of um, experience and what makes a company to be remarkable. The first thing is a small little exercise. Who wants to join me? <laughs> I'm, well, you? I'm in. <laughs> okay, great. You can tell in sales, right? Just Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. Jennifer, do you like your job? Um, yes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Would, <I> have you <laughs> mind, <laughs> Would you mind sharing with us the reason why you like your job? Um, because I get to work with extraordinary people. I get to learn new things all the time, and I get to help people learn how to save money. Great. And by, after the meeting, you can give me your information. You're getting a free book that I call authored. Uh, for working with me on thank that one. You. <laughs> okay, so the reason why I took this example is the first thing we could talk for days and hours and weeks about extraordinary and, and like the customer experience. If you don't like your job, you don't have a passion what you do, ain't gonna work. The reason why is just to put things in perspective, that's more for the business owners than employees, but you get the feel of it, is a lot of people get to deal with me and my company, a lot of people get to speak to, speak to deal with Ellie when they speak about Reaper Wings and other companies. But at the end of the day, all of you over here that have a pool of clients and deal with a lot of people, those people, when they think Regal Wings, they think about Rebecca. They don't know Ellie. They might see a video of Ellie, or might see an email of Ellie. They know, in my business, when I look at a P-Tex group, I have tons of clients that know me, they get my emails, but when they think about P-Tex group, they think about Michael, Miriam, Sarah, whoever it is. If that person is not in the level of having that passion and having that loving feel to what they're doing, it comes across. There's no interaction, no training that could come in, in the way that the customer won't feel that, that that's what, what, what's in the way. So if we get it out, obviously I assume you were the first one, but everybody would share the same experience. So let's move on, on, on some stories. So the next thing that, did, that we need to discuss, obviously when it comes to you talking about the customer experience, um, the, there's a lot of brands out there, like probably the forefront of when you speak about it, we're speaking about the travel industry, which airline is known for the customer experience? Southwest Airlines is known for their experience. There's tons and tons, if you just Google experience of Southwest Airlines from the CEO 
that created the company and the direction that he, that he took the company. You know, there's a lot of just stories about their employees, how, how proud they are to be Southwest agents. There's a story that I want to share with you. There was once an agent, there was once a person that had to take a Southwest flight to a very important meeting. As he was um, driving to the airport, obviously in the New York traffic, he had, a lot of, he had a lot of traffic. He was rushing and rushing to get to the counter and he tells, I want to check in to my flight. And the agent tells him, unfortunately you just missed the flight, that's the flight that's just leaving over there. He burst out crying and saying, you, you know, you can't imagine how much effort I put in to get that business meeting and no chance will give me another shot and, and I just I lost everything. I had so much hope in this and by five minutes, you know, he was trying to give out anger, by five minutes I should lose that opportunity. And the agent was going, you know, obviously tried to calm, calm the person and then she went in the back, she asked some details, she went in the back, she picked up the phone, called that person he needed to reach, they needed to meet with, and told them, this is so-and-so from Southwest Airlines, we had a situation, our flight was left earlier than it needed to, and this person then missed the flight, what can you do to accommodate this person and give him another meeting? That's a true story. They came out and told the person about this, uh, that luckily we were able to reschedule your meeting, you can take our next flight and we'll give you some time in the afternoon. But that story, why it's so powerful, because how do I know it? Because pe that person shared it. That, that experience was shared time and time again, over and over again. Another experience, which is, let's take Zappos, which is also known for the customer service, not the cheapest at all. And and Zappos was able to create that moment, that experience, that Amazon was able to buy them off for billions and billions of dollars. The first term that Amazon CEO put on the table <coughs> is, we're not going to touch your culture. We're keeping it separate because we know that that was sales. And people go to the Zappos and buy stuff, even they know they could go on Amazon, which is the parent company now, and buy it for cheaper, they'll go to Zappos. A story that happened, also shared um, a lot all over the place, is uh, a woman called Zappos to return a pair, pair of shoes. Uh, obviously, which is the, the basic question before they do their full return, they ask, ask the woman, why are you returning a pair of shoes? That unfortunately was for my husband and he passed away a couple of weeks ago. So they gave the return and a week later, that woman got a bouquet of flowers at their door from Zappos. So that's a story, again, it's remarkable because the experience, that situation, was an ex customer experience that was remarkable, that person was able to share this. And the third uh, story, which is another brand which is known, which is when it, whoever was at the Disney um, Park knows they're also known for their experience. And there was once a story which a uh, family obviously had their, their, their trip, the holiday um, trip, and the mother bought a, a lollipop for one of the kids. As he was walking out of one of the shops, um, it fell down, it broke, and he started uh, putting up a tantrum like every kid does when the lollipop breaks. There was a, an, uh, one of the employees of Disney standing the other side, seeing what's happening, without thinking a minute, they went to the shop, bought a lollipop, gave it to the child. This is complimentary from Disney for the child. So those are all the stories, the way I know it, because they were shared over and over from speakers to, um, and, and on the internet, and, and those are, there's dozens of those type of speakers, um, stories. What is the common thing you see of those stories is the person taking charge, obviously they, should, they could have just take care of their situation on the best of their ability. They went the extra step. They said, what can I do afterwards to take that, um, um, that situation and make it an experience remarkable moment? Taking the, the, the Southwest, she would be the friendliest customer service rep has she just given the information to the client that she missed a flight. Nothing is requested from her to do more than that. And the customer would have no, no aggravation about the Southwest experience. But she took it on a level that I'm going to go by far next step, and that would be able to do something that's remarkable. And the same as with the other stories. Now, and I, I know you all, you all of you thinking, and that's something that everybody's saying, because those are large brands, they're able to have extra staff, they have the time, they have the money, the Disney guys, on Disney, just a particular Disney, and the same as with Zappos, they get a budget of money that they could like, that how much they could spend on their own, without asking managers, without asking anybody, they could spend on customer relationship. In terms of Zappos, Zappos is known, and that's the, the CEO of Zappos um, has 
said that a million times that 75% of their marketing budget goes into wine customers and they put it into their existing infrastructure by upgrading shipping, by giving returns 365, by having live operators and they get about 5,000 calls a day. And every other company out there actually has metrics to see how many calls a CSR, could, a custom service rep could handle and they kill that. Doesn't matter how, long, uh, how many calls, it's a matter of how many calls you were able to solve. So those are the things as episodes. So we, we small companies, how do we take that experience and bring it to life? So I'd like to share with you another experience, something that we could a little bit much closer to home, which we could understand, which does the same trick, the same customer experience. A friend of mine came from out of town, and he, um, he didn't want to take taxi, so he rented a car. He, it was a Hertz car, he rented a car. And as he was, you know, doing his, uh, his, his thing and his, his shopping and all of the, and the, when he was ready to go back to the airport, unfortunately on the way back, um, there was a two-car head-on collision. And there was a, a flatbed trailer which also knocked into that car and he was right in the, um, um, underneath that and, and he also, he also uh, was involved in the accident. Luckily his car wasn't um, damaged, but Hertz's car was total loss. <laughs> So, the first thing he calls, if you, if, you're, if you have a rental car, it says call 911 for, for, for the accident, and then call Hertz to let them know that the car was involved in an accident. So he calls up the rep at Hertz, and he tells them, he tells them that uh, we have, um, 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 I was involved in an accident, like, he's, or, you know, after accident, you're in that mode, you, you didn't settle yet, he calls you, tells you, I was involved in an accident. So the, the person on the phone says, okay, first, Mr. McCain, are you okay? He says, yes, I'm okay, but I'm involved in an accident. I'll process my claim because I need to know because the, and I want the, the emergency vehicle will be here in any, any second. So he says, sorry, Mr. McCain, maybe take a deep breath. Are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? He says, one second, like he's thinking to himself, am I okay? And he says, yes, I'm okay. So the person saw like a second that this person like has it. Why, I'm asking tw why is she asking twice the same question? So she told Mr. McCain, I want to tell you, sorry for asking the same question twice, because the reason why I'm asking the question is because Hertz has a lot of cars, but we only have one Mr. McCain. Mm -hmm. Okay? What did the, that statement, which took a couple of seconds to, for this rep to tell, made a custom, this person a customer for life. Price is not a factor. Anything won't get in the way, nothing will get in the way actually, to get this person not to buy, take another Hertz car in the future. But let's break this story up so we can have some lessons that we can learn from that. What is involved in every single phone call? There's two parts, in particular in this particular call. He called because he needed to process a claim. So the first thing is process. So if she would, that's expected. The caller calls up because he needs to process a claim. That's the processing part. If she would process the claim, she took care of processing the claim. The second thing is service. Service, there are companies that do better service, pick up the phone quicker, a little bit more, um, a, len a lengthy conversation. That's service, which is expected, but every company has their own way of, 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 of rating their, their, their service levels. What she did is she humanized and personalized the phone call. That's something which is unexpected, and that's what makes a true experience for a client that makes it remarkable. When she was able, and basically what we discussed before, she was able to, to turn it around and say that we have Hertz as other cars, but we don't have another Mr. McCain. That is the humanized and personalization to a phone call, which is done, which, which gave that extra push to make a company from ordinary to extraordinary. And it's definitely what makes it remarkable. In our life, in our business, we have the same thing. We, we work with travel and then we pick up phone calls, customer service. Now processing would mean the reservation, the customer service challenge. Service would mean things at the metrics, how quick we pick up the phone. But if we're able to personalize and humanize that phone call, like you said before, with some information, and today's day and age, I bet you, it's way, way easier than, it, than you think it is. I, for instance, I'll just give you a small tip. Um, I have a small bar which, when somebody sends me an email, it will pull up all his profiles from social media. So I know what he ate for breakfast, and what he ate for lunch, and what he ate yesterday, <laughs> where he went for supper. So, so by the time I'm communicating with him, uh, I have what to talk about. Or if I saw that he 
was, he's a Yankee fan, and all of a sudden I need to get him in the mode to speak to him. I says, what do you say to the Yankee game? So I know he's a Yankee fan because I saw in his profile how he's, 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 a, he's following the Yankees and he said some comments about the Yankees. All of a sudden, I know that I have something to talk about besides our problem, our challenge. Now, that's one scenario. The other scenario is, a lot of times we'll get a lead the first time, like, like we discussed before. You've spoken to him, you know he went to a travel, uh, he went to a vacation, he's coming back, he had a challenge, he wants to check if you get points or whatever he was. But you know, you ask him a simple question, like, how was it, did you visit the Trump Tower, did you visit uh, the Eiffel Tower, whatever it is. He was there, you know when you booked the ticket, how much does it take to just ask him how he felt? Now, I know a lot of people will babble and start talking that like never before. There's wait, we could have another conversation how to get him back on track. <laughs> but first do your part. Get him into a conversation. And you know what he puts down the phone? Those guys care. They're not about selling my ticket, they're about my experience. And that's what makes us remarkable. So what we need to learn from this, this small talk and, and understand from those stories, again, there are the only stories about how we could adapt it to our business if if we could humanize and personalize those same scenarios, <coughs> our goal and what we do on every, every single day, those are the things that makes us remarkable and if we do it to every customer, every prospect and every time. That means a lot of customers are not that stupid to be fake that. If they see this is a script that that Eli put in place that every customer you now you have to ask him what he ate for breakfast, ain't gonna work. Because the next time he calls, he gets the same question, what do you eat for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> so those, those needs to be, those, there needs to be the passion that you have for your job. That's why we started over the passion. Getting that concept that if I make some, a, a moment of experience, too many, cost, too many companies focus on the transaction, not on the experience. If we could turn this around with Regal Wings to turn it into an experience every single time we speak to a customer, those are our customers for life. Those are our customers that will remarket the company to their friends and family. Let me end with a short story from Johnny the, bag the Bagger. There was once a speaker that spoke about the same topic to a whole group of people working at supermarkets. That supermarket had one person the name of Johnny, which was unfortunately a Down syndrome. And he was part of the audience. He was listening to what the speaker is saying about to, to create, create every moment an experience rather than a transaction. And, he, and she gave them like homework. When you go home tonight, think about how could you take your job, make it from a transaction to a to a, an experience. So he comes home. The, the Johnny comes home, speaks to his father, and says, "I just heard a whole day of training, and they told me I have to make my transaction to an experience. What could I do? I bag the grocery goods all day long." So the father says, "I have an idea. Let's create an inspirational quote of the day. Let's." make copies, and you're going to be putting that in to every single bag that you bag in the supermarket. They like, he liked the idea, they actually wrote up six quotes on a sheet, made some photocopies, cut it, the next day Johnny's at work, he starts putting in those quotes. What ended up happening, it became su such a momentum for the neighborhood, for the supermarket, that one of the owners came in, he saw a long line at Johnny's register, and he's trying to figure out, there's five registers that are open, so he says, Sir, there's a old register over there. It says, no, we want to we wanna bag our bags by Johnny the bagger because he puts in a quote in our bag. What ended up happening, people that used to shop once a week started coming in every day, or uh, and people that came in every day started coming multiple ways because that, that inspirational moment by getting from Johnny the bagger that quote every single day gave them inspiration. And that's definitely that created that ex remarkable experience to, to bring it from from transaction to um, to an experience. Why I'm saying that to you, first of all, because that Johnny the Bagger, if you Google Johnny the Bagger, you're gonna get tons of YouTube videos and articles written about it because that's an experience that people talk about. But more importantly, in our lives, every single day, every single day, when we finish our day, we can look back in the day and say, did I, did, did I do a lot of transactions or were I, was I able to take a transaction and create it into an experience? That gives your job a, a higher meaning, it gives you a, a sense of satisfaction. Because every job is boring to a certain extent, you know? You do the same thing or you meet 
too many new people or you meet too many challenges, but we all live in that world. That life is not made, meant to be easy. But if you look back at your day, you could say, I'm gonna try every single day before, before um, to at least make one life, one person's experience and change his life, give him a good word, throw in that extra, uh, humanize and personalize that phone call. And if you feel that satisfaction, that will drive you day in, day out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know, I know that it's going to be an amazing speech, but you, you, surpassed, you surpassed all the expectations. Thank you so, so much. So I, I'm going to title this, you know, Joseph is there taking care of the, of the, uh, of the camera. By the way, this is Joseph, Joseph from uh, WebEx, but we all know right, him. Right. He's behind the scenes of every beautiful website that we have. Um, I'm, I'm going to title this, Turning a Transaction into an Experience. I think that will that's the, that's the, be the beautiful name for it. Thank you so, so much. And by the way, this is, uh, this is very important, you know, many kept on referring to Ellie. This is not Ellie, this is Ellie, this is Sam and Ellie. Sam yeah. is my partner. Without Sam, nothing of this, you know, would have would have happened. It's the two of us together trying to be dedicated and making this work. So, Absolutely. Yes, thank you so very much. And uh, is there anyone that wants to yeah, go ahead. I have another story that I'd like to share. Absolutely. Stand up, Chloe. Let's hear. Thank um, you. Well I, I read it online, but um, even just you know the title caught my attention, so I read the whole story. It was very sweet, it was about a 10 year old boy um, who was disabled and he was a huge Lego fan. He was a huge Lego fan and he had every single collection. And he was in the store with his mother, he saw a big train set that he wanted. His mother said, I'm not going to spend money on another set, you have so many. Save up yourself. So every birthday present, every Christmas, every time he got money, he saved it for this train. And he managed to have the $100 or $200 about a year later or two years later. And when he went to the store, they didn't have any more. So he called up Lego and he said, I really want this train set. And he said, I'm sorry, it's discontinued. It's, uh, it's not available anymore. So he wrote them a letter explaining what happened. He said, I saved my money for years and years. I really want this train set. Can you perhaps look in, you know, in the back or try and find me this train? So they sent him a letter back. Um, and I'm sorry, we don't have it, but we'll have a look for you. Two weeks later, the package arrived at the door with the train set, free of charge came, and they wrote a letter saying that, you know, they realized how much he saved for it, how much he wanted it, and he's such a Lego fan that they're giving it to him. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so very much, everyone. Let's make it a great week, and we'll, we'll all sit again next week, Wednesday. Thanks again, Manny. I appreciate it. Yeah.